hey guys a very good evening to all of you now in this video i'm just going to highlight the important topics okay not the strategy video like it is for inorganic chemistry but there are certain topics you know which you tend to miss out uh, when you are doing uh, you know when you're doing revision or you know there are certain topics which are in trend and then there are certain topics which have not been in trend for a long time but they are important topics okay which had been you know uh, asked earlier but for the timing for the last two or three exams they have not been asked right so i'm going to highlight those topics and in general also i'm going to highlight the topics that are relevant for the upcoming june 2019 exam and this june 2019 exam is going to be the last exam as you can see because from december 2019 onwards we are going to have computer based exam as was released by the official notification of csr that release it on twitter that the exam is now going to be uh, computer based right so i'll talk about what are the repercussions what are, what are the consequences of the exam being computer based right there are a lot of consequences of that definitely the pattern is also going to change so uh, that i'll talk about in certain in some other video right so june 2019 is like one of the last exams which is going to be pen and paper based and uh, anyway so let's talk about the um, the topics okay so i have done research from june 2012 to december 2018 exams and i found a pattern of some topics which were uh, time and again being asked in each and every exam right from december 2012 to june 2018 and these topics are acid and base concept right for example water molecule is given to us and there are two reactions given to us and they will ask in which reaction is the water molecule acting as a base and in which reaction it is acting as an acid okay so questions like these based on acid base concept on general concepts like oxygen oxidizing and redu reducing power okay like cro4 uh, chromium in its highest oxidation state um then uh, let's say uh, below chromium we have molybdenum in its highest oxidation state and then uh, you know like that you, they can give you questions right then tungsten in, in its highest oxidation state rhenium in its highest oxidation state they will give you four complexes and they will ask you which is, which has the highest oxidizing power or which has the highest reducing power like that okay so questions based on reducing and oxidizing powers okay the latest in the latest exam i think june 2018 exam also there was a question based on oxidizing and reducing power right so these are some basic concepts which have been time and again being asked especially acid based concept and reducing and oxidizing power of various inorganic complexes okay then you have inorganic solvents now this is a very uh, you can say undermined topic inorganic solvents if you pick out any question paper from csr from the last 10 or 12 exams every year there has been a four marker from inorganic solvents at least a, if not a four marker a two marker but there has definitely been a question which is very easy to score right so inorganic solvents is given uh, i have made a video as well on youtube regarding inorganic solvents if you watch that i think that is good enough for the csr net exam okay then we have cluster chemistry as star marked it because cluster chemistry is one topic which has never been missed out okay be it in terms of weight rule weights rule you know a number of skeletal electrons uh metal metal bonds um then 18 electron rule and its applications uh bridging ligands then uh, we have your simple uh, polyhedral skeletal electron pair theory you know whether it's nido closo iracno the cluster geometry then the actual geometry like square antiprism tri tetra cap square uh, trigonal prismatic like that different geometries are there so i've already made a video uh, which is stated as unified theory of metal clusters so if you watch that video i think that is good enough for the csn at exam and along with that you can watch the video on how to calculate number of metal metal bonds okay the, these two topics if you do i think clusters is, uh, you have more or less um, kind of studied okay there might be some odd questions in december 2013 if you look at the december 2013 exam paper there might be a few questions um which might not be you know you know which are not very common okay and for those questions you can't do really do anything right i am this video is specifically for those students who are preparing the last 15 days or who have not been preparing for the last six months if you have been preparing for the last six months then you know this video would just highlight you the important topics if you have missed out or not okay but it is especially important for those who have been preparing for the last 30 days or whose exams have just ended about 10 or 12 days back and now they are preparing for the exam so you should know what are the important topics to focus on right then we have um, 18 electron rule and applications and clusters more or less they are you know they can be combined together and then we have general trends okay i am not talking about coordination and organometallics okay <laughs> these are the two topics which are like pillars of inorganic chemistry if your these two topics are strong these are side topics which are important okay these two topics especially the reaction mechanism in coordination and organometallics this itself can carry out up to 10 questions so 40 50 marks of worth of questions come from coordination organometallics reaction mechanism only okay i'll discuss about this as well but i'm just telling you the side topics which are also important so clusters you know one question is definitely there from acid acidity and basicity in december 2018 exam also you see one question from acidity and basicity right 
then we have general trends like electronegativity ionization potential okay there are there have been a lot of questions on ionization potential time and again which is basically related to electronic configuration so you should be aware of the um, periodic table in general and what are the electronic configurations especially for lanthanides and actinides okay there the electronic configuration is very important okay there have been some discrepancies in the uh, you know electronic configuration of lanthanides and actinides so definitely if not for actinides at least for lanthanides you should be aware of the electronic configuration i made a video on this as well you know magnetism in lanthanides i think the video is titled as magnetism in lanthanides okay then we have questions based on magnetic moment simple you know calculating the bohr magneton calculating calculating the number of unpaired electrons so this is simple coordination chemistry right and then uh, from lanthanides and actinides a couple of questions are always there in the exam and especially you know color magnetism oxidation state size how to separate lanthanides you know ion exchange resins so these have been there have been some questions on all of these properties the oxidation state the magnetism the size you know due to lanthanide contraction there have been questions based on size of lanthanides as well so there have been a lot of questions if you just you know i tell everyone that if you sincerely do questions each and every question from june 2012 up to december 2018 if you do each and every question sincerely and you know the concept behind it there is no way that you are, you will not be able to crack this csr exam okay if you sincerely do all these questions from june 2012 to december 2018 no one can stop you from cracking the exam okay sincerely if you do the questions right okay so um then you have inorganic nmr and it's quite simple okay generally questions are based on they will give you at room temperature and then they will lower down the temperature so, so they say basically that is that is dependent on the behavior of fluxional behavior that is depending on fluxional whether the ligands ligands are fluxional or not right so fluxional ligands generally are co ligands or your you know cyclopentadiene you know eta 1 cp right yeah cyclopentadiene uh, where only one carbon is attached that is also fluxional but at lower temperatures the fluxionality is lost due to which we see different multiple see multiple multiple peaks okay generally at room temperature we will see only one peak for example like that okay due to the fluxional behavior and then we have questions simple questions from 19f nmr and 31p nmr which are very simple if you just look at the previous year questions uh, there are questions from 31p 19f they're quite simple they're just based on geometry you should know which particular fluorine or which which, which particular phosphorus is in a different environment than the others so if you know the basics of geometry and you know the basics of nmr um, there's nothing inorganic about it like it's general nmr you can do it like you generally do for organic spectroscopy okay then we have questions from epr and mosbar and analytical techniques so these are the questions the uh, analytical techniques like there have been a lot of questions so these are the kind of topics which are important apart from coordination and organometallics okay so many of you already know about it right so you might be wondering what is there that i'm actually going to tell you in this video well these are the topics and these are the most some topics which are have not been highlighted in the last two or three exams which are very very important and which i feel that this time in the exam they might be either one or many of them might be there in the exam okay so now i'm going to talk about those topics and then i'm going to finally tell you what are the major topics that you need to prepare if you have last 15 days for preparing in organic chemistry okay so one is metathesis metathesis there was a question in june 2018 and then there was no question and if you see previously i mean before june 2018 there have been no question as such on metathesis so metathesis is one topic which i expect there might be a four marker in june 2019 because it's an important topic and yet it has not been you know and asked that much right so this is a topic which has been in the dark for a long time and i think metathesis is one question that could be there in the csr exam right then we have base hydrolysis okay this is a question from coordination reaction mechanism in reaction mechanism we have associative dissociative inter uh, you know interchange mechanism then we have inner sphere outer sphere mechanism but base hydrolysis is one topic which you'll see it has been continuously asked in each and every csr exam okay all right maybe they, they will give a gap of one exam but again there will be a question from base hydrolysis right so for this i think um, for csr ex exam purposes you can refer to ajay kumar though this concept is there in many other books but if you want it in a simple language then you can go for because CS ajay kumar is like seriously meant for just csr right no, no other exam or for gate exam for example right so it's very specific to csr and gate exam so you can go for base you can study base hydrolysis from coordination chemistry by ajay kumar okay then we have a topic called partition function now uh, i don't know how many of you gave the bark 2019 exam but there have been a lot of questions in the bark exam also on partition function right 
and this question was also there in june 2018 exam as well so please do partition function properly okay this is an important topic which might be asked this time okay then we have this giant teller distortion compression and elongation okay giant teller distortion compression and elongation okay so there have been questions on based on giant teller that in which system giant teller distortion is going to take place and in which system it is not going to take place but these questions based on compression and elongation in which case compression will take place in which case elongation will take place that has not been asked okay so please do this topic as well then we have coordination number of woodsite and antifluoride okay this is one topic which is um, you can say um, you know like there is there was a question i think recently on based on calcium you know there there, uh, there was a um, question based on calcium ca b6 right ca b6 compound was given to us and they had asked that what will be the coordination number of i think calcium right if it follows woodside structure so you should basically know what is a woodside structure what is an antifluoride structure it comes in solid state to be honest like in physical chemistry but this kind of topic is asked from in organic chemistry as well so you can basically just have a glimpse of what is the coordination number in woodside structure in zns structure in antifluoride structure okay like that now this is you can double star it isomerism in coordination complexes this definitely i have a very strong intuition is going to be asked this time as well i had an intuition for gate 2019 as well and there was a question in gate 2019 okay and i think this time there will also be a question from december uh, june 2019 exam as well so please do this properly isomerism in co coordination complexes uh, about your chiral like how to find whether it's optically active or in inactive which particular complex is active which particular complex is inactive and the geometrical isomerisms right or how many stereoisomers will you find for a particular coordination complex please do this topic really well isomerism in coordination complexes right and then again this is something that i told you has been has been been asked from a long long time but suddenly you will see in the last two or three exams there have been no question from millikan symbols so please do millikan symbols very very properly okay this time definitely again i'm there's a very strong intuition that there will be a question from millikan symbols okay and then you should know the exchange rate okay if i talk about lanthanides and actinides you should know the exchange rate that you know what kind of lanthanides separate out in cation exchange region and what kind of um, lanthanides separate out in ion exchange region okay what are the principles of cation exchange region and anion exchange region and okay this is not very important from organometallics you can do agostic and anagostic interactions there have been no questions at all in the csr exam one one odd time in 2014 or 2015 there was a question based on agostic and anagostic interactions after that there have been no questions based on agostic and anagostic interactions so you can definitely um, you know study this topic properly obviously if you are doing organometallics this is a very important topic which comes under cyclometallation but you know sometimes students don't tend to pay attention to how to differentiate between agostic interactions and anagostic interactions it's given very well in the book by bd gupta and aj elias okay so you can see this agostic and anagostic interactions from there and then from nuclear chemistry every year there's a question in csr um, which is from a different kind of topic okay there is not there's no trend to it but if you want to do nuclear chemistry or if you have the time this is again this is just for those students who have already done everything then you can go for q value and cross section these are the most common questions from nuclear chemistry the uh, whether they ask you a question on the q value that is the energy released or absorbed in a nuclear reaction that is the q value or they can ask you questions on the cross section okay of the nucleus where you have to find the value in units of barn b a r n right now coming to those students who have last 15 20 days this would be very very uh, there's so many topics it would be very tough for you to comprehend so i have just noted down the important topics over here first we have coordination and organometallics reaction mechanism in organometallics we have beta hydride elimination which is very important and its applications like thermal decomposition okay uh, which which particular ligand will undergo thermal decomposition fastest which which will have highest number of beta hydrogens okay so like that beta hydride and applications then oxygen additive addition reductive elim elimination migratory insertion these are very important topics okay then in the ex since, since since june to june 2017 the exam pattern changed okay so there were some questions which were retained and some which were discarded okay because the number of questions were reduced so now if you if you focus on june 2017 to december 2018 there have been four exams and in four exams you will see a lot of questions from catalysis okay i, I might have written down over here 
catalysis yeah you will see questions from catalysis so please do from organometallics catalysis specifically vacuum process hydroformylation okay there was a question in december 2018 as well and there was a question like previously as well so vacuum process hydroformylation and monsanto acetic acid process these are the three important ones which you should do these are three most important ones right there are others as well so again like i'm telling for those students who are preparing right now okay those who have, who have been preparing for a long time you have to do all obviously like fisher drop cativa and uh, you know zsm5 then ziegler nata catalyst so you have to do all of them but i'm saying th those of you who are less on time you can focus on these three hydroformylation um then we have vacuum process and monsanto acetic acid process you can focus on these three right and obviously the wilkinson's catalyst like you should know the trend in the wilkinson catalyst like you know it reduces alkynes first then it reduces the ones with polar groups then it reduces simple alkenes um then substituted alkenes and then at last we have tetra substituted alkenes then it favors cis over trans so these are the things that you should know about wilkinson catalyst as well right so anyway coming on to the topics which are important and which i expect each and every question from there one is metal carbonyl especially the ir stretching frequency this question is very common and you can expect this in the uh, this year's exam as well then we have isolobal analogy obviously then we have vesper theory okay vesper theory is very basic so you should do this along with that in bio and organic now again bio and organic is a very vast topic so for your simplicity i will tell you from june 2008 12 to december 2018 all the questions that have come from bio and organic are either based on hemoglobin and hemocyanin or carbonic anhydrase where you know zinc is actually the main metal so over here the questions have been based on the structure the mechanism the role everything okay so over here you have to study these topics in detail that is hemoglobin hemocyanin carbonic and hydrase for rest of the uh, bio and organic complexes like ferridoxin rubidoxin superoxide dismutase um uh, myoglobin hemerythrin so for all these topics all you should know is what what is the function of these particular bio bio and organic complexes and what metal is involved so if you know this that what function do they play and what metal is involved that is enough okay i have also made a crash course video on bio and organic chemistry that you can go ahead and watch okay right then we have um from clusters clusters again unified theory of clusters there is a video that i have made and if you can see that i think your cluster chemistry is done okay and along with cluster chemistry i mean 18 electron rule also and the num finding the number of metal metal bonds okay along with that sometimes 18 electron rule you should know both methods there are two methods one is neutral method and one is oxidation state method so why am i telling you to know both the methods because sometimes in the question they ask you what is the oxidation state of the metal so using the 18 electron rule you can also find out the oxidation state of the metal so that is also important right then we have you know one there definitely there, there is going to be one question from inorganic solvent if you want to do analytical chemistry i would recommend if you have less on time then please do tga thoroughly and do some numericals on titration some previous questions based on numericals from titration that would be good enough if you are short on time if you have lot of time then obviously you can do a lot of topics so these are the expected questions the questions that i am expecting in inorganic uh paper in 2019 june 2019 right then we then do nmr and mosbar properly okay nmr questions and mosbar and focus less on epr because epr has been asked last year as well and before that as well and suddenly they have stopped asking questions direct questions from mosbar whereas in previous years you will see there, there have been a lot of questions from mosbar spectroscopy right so please do mosbar and nmr properly for this exam right epr also if you have time then do go for epr as well uh, but focus more on mosbar as it is there are more concepts that are involved in mosbar as compared to epr right so mosbar is something nmr is also if you do practice if you apply logic you can do it in the exam but in mosbar there have been a, there are a lot of concepts okay so please do mosbar properly so again i'll repeat so metal carbonyls vesper bio inorganic focus on the functions and role of various bio, bio inorganic complexes along with uh focus more on the structure of hemoglobin hemocyanin and carbonic anhydrase then from analytical if you want to do if you have the time this is this should be done at the last focus on tga and do some numericals from titration okay previous equations then we have clusters this is something that you definitely have to do please just have a look at my video on inorganic solvents that would be good enough there definitely is going to be one four marker at least from inorganic solvents then focus on uh, mosbar 
okay spectroscopy and then we have lanthanides and actinides again i have a crash course video on lanthanides and actinides uh, but over there focus on the electronic configuration and the magnetic moment of lanthanides okay i feel there will be a question based on magnetic moment as it is i also told you that there will be a question based on ion exchange chromatography from anthel lanthanides and actinides right uh, then we have from coordination chemistry like coordination mechanism it's very important i told you labile and inert complexes trans effect water exchange rate uh, inner sphere outer sphere mechanism marcus equation base hydrolysis and isomer isomer isomerism in coordination complexes these are some certain topics that you need to do and then organometallic mechanism i've already discussed and catalysis i told you hydroformylation vacuum process and monsanto acetic acid process um, then simple questions from mlct lmct and dd transition which is quite simple and a very obvious topic that is asked every year and then we have general inorganic chemistry if you again have the time that is acid basis acid acidity uh, oxidizing power reducing power acidity basicity of various inorganic compounds and finally if you have the time and you want to do main group chemistry you should do boron chemistry phosphorus chemistry especially borazines questions can be there from borazines uh, or you know cyclophosphazines phosphorus oxo acids right and then we have noble gases so if you have time for main group chemistry you can focus on these four topics earlier there were questions from spinels and silicates as well like in December, till about 2013 but after after 2013 there have been no question from spinels and silicates and similarly up to december 2016 there used to be questions from polarography but after december 2016 there has been no question from polarography after the pattern changed there has been no question the last four exams from polarography okay and as this polarography is quite a lengthy topic as well but if you still have the time and you want to do it so along with tg and titration you can also include polarography though i feel this time there should not be any question from polarography right so yeah that's about it uh, it might be a little overwhelming and it will be too many topics uh, but this is what inorganic chemistry is about there have there are too many topics but they are quite simple okay like if you try and focus on coordination mechanism i can tell you if you sit and study properly it won't take you more than 2 days and if you do at least these topics really well okay um you can easily do around 15 to 16 four markers from an organic chemistry for sure okay 15 to 16 questions so i mean if you can spend enough time and do all these topics um then it will be good for you this these are some of the topics if you have already done your preparation and you have still missed out something so please do these topics properly that i have mentioned okay especially i think um, isomerism molecular symbols and uh, your jtd compression and elongation these are the three topics which i feel are very important and very relevant relevant for the june 2019 exam right so anyway i hope you found this detailed video useful if you did please let me know in the comment section down below and if you are still not subscribed to the channel please do subscribe thank you so much for watching